Good afternoon, everybody. So I'm Gilo, and uh, I must confess that um, yesterday was my birthday. So as I was preparing for this speech, I was picturing myself you know, back in time. And I'm going to ask you to do the same. Where were you 20 years ago? So try to picture yourself, right, 20 years ago. No LinkedIn, no Facebook, no drones, things like this. Since then, um, our life changed a bit. Personally, 20 years ago, I was just starting my career as a software engineer, and my very first job was to implement an HTML server into a very tiny bit of CPU of uh, you know, 64 kilobytes of, uh, of uh, memory. And um, I've seen, obviously, like many of you here, uh, the, the growing size of our capability in you know, software development. Um, and um, obviously, not only the software, but all the hardware related to it um, really came over in our lives. So here, picturing myself you know, at home with a connected um, counter for water, for electricity, um, my, my smartphone, my laptop, all of this together is now part of my, my daily life. And I guess for many of you as well, some, sometimes because you made a choice, sometimes because you were obliged you know, like uh, in France, for example, we are now obliged to have a connected counter for electricity. And I guess it's pretty much the same uh, in, in many of uh, the um, Western world. So, and why am I talking about this to you? It's because my role today is not to talk about primary energy demand or energy efficiency, etc., but everything else. All environmental indicators that we can and, and should use uh, when we try to draft sustainability for our own activity, for our nations, for our continent, and for the world, basically. So um, the first message is um, digital is material. You know, we've been talking for the past 20 years about cloudification, digitalization, and for many people it's like hardware suddenly disappears. Um, because now it is somewhere in the cloud and you know, I get this access to services and things like this. But uh, as this has been already mentioned quite a few times today, uh, digitalization requires quite um, some hardware resource. And I want to quote here one study uh, performed out of France by the French equivalent of the UB. Uh, the name is uh, ADEM. Uh, basically, their role is to help um, the, the country understand better uh, how to use um, uh, for the better world, uh, energy and, and uh, environmental um, uh, considerations. And in, in this uh, nationwide study, uh, they realized that on average, a French person, if a French person can be average, um, consumes, <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, you may realize I'm French, right? <laughs> uh, consumes nearly one ton of material. And that includes minerals, um, fossils um, use, but also water use. When, when, when you just create the equipment and you distribute it, at the end of the year, each single adult in France would have consumed the equivalent of one ton of material. And this is something that, you know, when you're not aware, obviously, you can buy this and buy that and you're okay, and then you, you can even you know, create a circular economy. Uh, the message here is, let's be aware of what we're doing. There is two numbers here. One is about the waste, electronic waste, and you know, all the waste about what we, we use or do not use. And the second one is about the natural resources that we actually extract from the earth every year for our digital usage. Now, I must say, um, I'm a part of the people, um, uh, I think it was Anita this morning, and say, no, or Laurie, uh, finding someone who knows IT and software and knows environmental uh, uh, assessment, it's quite rare. I'm part of these guys. Uh, so I'm here to represent you know, what we do uh, here in Europe. Um, so I'll be, I will be talking a bit about some studies out there. But I wanted to show you um, the, the several uh, environmental indicators that we use when we perform an environmental assessment today, not including biodiversity, uh, knowing that biodiversity is a complete other set of uh, 
um, you know, pr practitioners are doing differently, but this is going to be also included in Europe, included in Europe uh, thanks to the CSRD mentioned earlier as well. But here you can see, you know, we have um, a, a dozen of indicators, and um, the one in, um, in in bold dark here, climate change, resource use, and water use, are the three ones that we typically use when we try to assess digital technologies from an environmental standpoint. And then you can see you know, at, the, at the bottom here in a tiny bit, uh, ITU, so the uh, international telecom uh, units, uh, they recommend that we also integrate primary energy demand. Primary energy demand. It's not, it not, doesn't mean the energy that you use when you plug a computer or uh, a server somewhere. It's really all the losses that you have when, be, 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 between where you produce the energy and where the energy is actually used. So these four, water use, climate change, um, um, minerals and metals, and primary energy demand, are basically the, the four indicators that we use in each and every study performed out of Europe nowadays. Now, uh, some insights on, on this study. So on the, um, on the top, uh, top left here, you would see one study which is going to be published, I hope, in January 2020, well, next year, uh, 2024. Um, you know, that was my birthday, so I don't want to grow older and older. So. Um, and uh, this study is about um, having an outlook as to how moving from cloud computing to age computing is going to um, change our microeconomic situation, our environmental footprint as a, as a continent, but also the geostrategical um, new considerations. You know, we've been putting everything in the cloud. I think it's not uh, really a secret that uh, a lot of uh, companies owning cloud um, servers today are not really in Europe. Um, and if we move to the edge computing, how does that change? So this study has been ongoing for uh, almost a year. I've been a critical review for this from an environmental standpoint. And you will see that we can learn quite a few things, in particular in terms of growth of edge devices, Internet of Things devices, and things like this. Um, another one uh, which is already published, uh, the one on, on the right hand side, uh, assessment of the energy footprint of digital actions and services also produced by the um, EU Commission. Uh, and in this, uh, in this study that you can find online, you would see um, the, the different um, energy demand for depending on the activities that you do online, you know, video streaming, video gaming, and things like this. And then you could see on a unitary basis, which is basically if I watch one hour of video streaming online, or if I play a video game one, uh, during one hour, or if I extend the lifetime of my smartphone for one year, how does that compare? What, what is the, on average, here in Europe, uh, what is the energy used by these uh, different activities or uh, sp uh, saved by performing such or such activity? Um, and on the, uh, on the left, uh, the GRC, so the Joint Research Center uh, in Europe, is currently um, performing a study to understand what indicators we must enforce to the mobile network operators in Europe so that they consider the sustainability of the services that they provide, including you know, creating the networks, operating the networks, decommissioning the networks, et cetera, et cetera. And for this one, I'm also an invited expert to discuss with the operators to see how we can help them create uh, the awareness and the calculations of all of this. I wanted to mention as well the fact that it's not only Europe, but even the US and China are working quite a bit on this. China has already, you know, um, uh, published uh, different laws about uh, energy demand on the digital sector, and the U.S. has created the Green Communication Act, so which is uh, what you can read here: the generating resilience and blah blah blah. But uh, they are pretty much uh, trying also to raise awareness and to enforce some uh, some things out there. And the last one I want to emphasize, and I will deep dive into this one, is another French study uh, where uh, they've looked at. Um, you know, prospectively, where we are going in 2030 and 2050 um, in the digital sector if we um, try to create more sustainability and to um, achieve the Paris Accord by 2050 so that 2000 is uh, still somewhere where we can live um, today on Earth. So what I'm publishing here 
um, I'm sorry if it's difficult to, to read, but I will describe it briefly. Um, so ADEM created four different scenarios in terms of um, creating um, digital services for the future. And these four scenarios supposedly can lead us to the Paris Accord. So if we follow these scenarios, we should have the IT sector in France compatible with the Paris Accord. But these four scenarios take completely different society choices. So the one on the, on, on the top here, which is the repairing bet, I'm sorry if uh, there is a grammar spelling here. Uh, so the, the repairing bet is basically technology is going to save us. So let's continue our current trend and we will find different set of technologies that will help us with energy efficiency, with less travels, and so forth and so forth. And in this scenario, we can see that you know, on, on the right hand side, usage of digital technologies is going to blossom, like a lot of different usage. At the bottom here, you, we have what we call the frugal uh, scenario, where we do as less as possible um, um, from a technology standpoint, and we rather use you know, um, uh, sobriety or um, acceptable uh, uh, actions uh, in terms of digital service. Still, even if we do um, this scenario, we're still using uh, Internet of Things technologies, for example, still to help you know, uh, remote control and uh, remote uh, reporting of energy consumption and things like this. And then in the middle, you have two different scenarios. One is about you know, we create more collaborative uh, actions between territories, corporations, and things like this. And, and the, the, the other one, um, which is uh, green technologies. So we, we stop everything which is uh, futile, and we focus all our energy into creating uh, green technologies, including obviously digital technologies. This fourth scenario, you know, are supposedly going to, uh, to help us with the Paris Accord. But as you can see here, um, number of de devices might explode by like a multiplier of 40 if we go on the repairing bet. Uh, a lot of usage, um, but on the other, on, on the bottom one, we are going to use much more eco-design type of, um, of uh, actions. Uh, we want to expand the lifetime of hardware, etc., and it should help us as well go into uh, the scenario. What I wanted to do here, we follow, you know, to, in showcasing these four different scenarios, it's not technology for technology. You know, we've been talking about energy efficiency, green coding, and you know, how technology can help or not help, etc. It's really a matter of choice. Earlier, Max said it's probably the most political um, roundtable that he had. This is about this. No, it's a political choice as well. No, what type of society do you want to build together uh, when we use um, these technologies? And once we make a choice, how can we make it the most sustainable as possible? Now, um, obviously, as we said, IT technologies can help and they come with a cost. So the cost, we call it direct effect. So when we introduce technology, there is a direct effect, which is, you know, you, you need to extract the material, you need to produce it, you need to distribute it, you need to use it, etc., etc. And then there are what we call indirect effects. And indirect effects can come with different natures. A lot of people in the industry would tell you, well, software and IT, etc., can help you know, travel, travel less you know, for operational standpoint. So we, we, we do less um, oil and gas uh, consumption. So it's, it's very positive. Uh, and sometimes it's, uh, it's a different one. So now let's deep dive into this. But before I deep dive into uh, the different uh, effects, maybe talking a bit about why. I'm legitimate to talk about this. Uh, so I'm, I'm Gilo. I um, have co-founded a company um, three years ago called Mavana, and um, our raison d'être is to help uh, organizations, whether they are private, public, um, or even uh, uh, non-profit organizations, in identifying their environmental impact and help them assessing the cost, the benefits, or the potential damages in introducing digital technologies in their daily operations. And as we do that, we really, you know, we map 
the activities and we look at you know, every single process in their activity and, and really under, identify what we call the, the, the heating um, uh, points of where there are uh, more and more environmental uh, impacts and we try to help them uh, reduce that. Um, so to do that, we do a lot of quantification. So uh, GAG, um, uh, GAG food, footprint uh, evaluation, life cycle assessment, and things like this. But there are a lot of times where even before doing quantification, we need to raise awareness. I think it's at least the 78th time that we've sent awareness today. Um, so we raise awareness with uh, different workshops. Uh, Max mentioned the digital collage. If you don't know digital collage, come and see me. It's, it's, it's very... Um, a powerful uh, workshop, you know, in two, three hours, people get to understand the social and environmental impacts of uh, digital technologies. And then we also help uh, companies and institutions into, you know, creating studies and things like this. And this is why I'm helping uh, the French government or, or the U European Commission on this. And I'm originally a software developer. This is why I'm here. Um, you can't read this, I'm pretty sure, because it's uh, very small and in French, but I will explain it to you. Um, so what we do when we try to assess these costs, benefits, and damages, we start by looking at the reference scenario, you know, how people are doing today. And this is the first bar that you see here on the left. So it, these are, so, so said, the current environmental costs of the reference scenario. And then we introduce digital technologies. So that's the second tiny bit here. So at first, you increase the environmental cost. Now, by nature, you introduce something, you in need to produce it, to integrate it, etc. And then there are supposedly benefits. So you reduce the environmental cost. So if I take the example of um, um, you know, uh, video conferencing, the, uh, the, the company operates, you know, without video conferencing, you introduce video conferencing, so you have um, the software running on the laptops, you have a server, sometimes you have uh, devices and things like this, so you increase the cost. And then you say, now we have video conferencing, we don't need to travel anymore, you know, we can actually have um, a, a summit like this, uh, everybody is remote. So then you reduce the environmental cost because people are stopping traveling. But then as you do that, say, mm, actually we can invite even more people now or we can create more meetings because now it's more efficient. Then you create an additional burden that some of you may know as the rebound effect. Uh, so that's an example. And then as you do that, you say, yeah, yeah, but we can change habits. No, you can actually uh, do homeworking. Then you create another indirect effect. So we have the direct effect, the indirect effect, and the indirect of the indirect effect. You get what, I, what I'm going here, right? And then sometimes the indirect of the indirect effect, such as in track one, uh, track two earlier, they say, no, you, you reduce your, your you, you save money because you are more efficient and you know you guys uh, uh, do not uh, need to, um, to, to buy more computing power, for example, in data center. What do you do with this money? Well, sometimes you create other activities and then you have the rebound effect of the rebound effect. So our job is really to help companies understand that. So either, uh, so either afterwards, so they've done something and they want us to look into, you know, were we right and should we continue? Or, um, you know, proactively, so we plan to do something. What, what do you think about this? So sometimes it's positive, like this one. So you have this reference scenario on top and then suddenly at the end, considering all the indirect effects that we can model out, then you have a positive uh, impact. And sometimes it's negative. So our role is really to help the companies understand where they have um, things to do, things to change, to really understand um, you know, and, and, and be more sustainable uh, eventually. So I want to, um, and that's going to be uh, almost the end of uh, my speech here, I want to, to give you a case study in the pharmaceutical industry. So this large company came to us and said, I have these factories out there, everywhere in the world, and uh, because we produce um, medicines, and these medicines have to be produced in a very specific range of temperature, we use air conditioning, HVAC, to really you know, regulate the temperature within the factory. And um, three years ago, we've introduced Internet of Things, you know, connected objects, to automate uh, these um, uh, air conditioning systems. And before that, we were having a technician 
you know, um, driving around and this technician had kind of a craftsmanship skill. So just by listening to the machines, it would tell you, mm, this one is going to break down next month, so you should uh, do this thing, etc., etc. This guy was like top of the edge, but it was only one guy. Well, the guy can also you know, teach to someone else, etc., etc. But it's one guy that needs to travel across you know, different states in the U.S., for example. So they created this um, um, IoT. Uh, connected devices to, to automate and to be more efficient. And uh, when they asked us to look into you know, the results, so we've audited um, a factory in the US, another one in Canada, another one in Belgium, and we look into the details, you know, considering everything that I said to you before, reference scenario, introducing the technology, uh, you know, reducing and then uh, increasing again. And at the end of the day, we realized that out of the four factories that we've audited, only one had a positive impact net at the end. Why is that? Because this factory had only one or two buildings and the number of devices that were required to actually automate was fairly slow, very small. The other ones, where there is a high density of buildings, but then you need you know, 10, 20 different um, uh, devices within the factory, were much less efficient than just having one guy traveling. So with this new knowledge, this company was like, huh, huh, interesting. So I should, I've been you know, losing money um, in the past uh, three, uh, three years, and I have been um, um, increasing my environmental impact, whereas I was thinking that I was doing the right thing because uh, I'm not uh, using uh, gas anymore uh, to travel out there. Uh, so what we've done for them is kind of um, a configurator. <laughs> So, uh, because at the end of the day, with the same technology, but different conditions, you get to a different outcome. So technology by itself can be positive, can be negative. It really depends on what are the conditions of operations that you are doing uh, in this. Um, last consideration, um, but I guess a lot of you know that. Uh, when you create a system, sustainability has two best friends, data privacy and accessibility. If you address these two, then probably you would not you know, keep a lot of uh, data. You will make sure that it is as small as possible and as you know, readable as possible. And potentially your system is going to be uh, more efficient and uh, last uh, for a longer time than, uh, than the other one. Thank you. Last consideration. And this one is the very last. I did travel to come here. Um, and that was, you know, again, yesterday was my birthday. So I, I did make some, uh, some uh, sacrifice here. Please help me compensate for my travel. It's very easy. 10 kilograms of CO2, each one of you, if I'm not mistaken. So that could be, you know, if you want to buy a new smartwatch, don't do it. Or if you have a smartphone, just extend the lifetime. Next time you say, oh, I want to change it, you know, wait for another three months. It will compensate for my travel. Thank you.